Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. So you guys know that I moved back to Chicago, which means that I have a limited amount of time before winter comes and I can no longer work on things outside. So there are a few things that I wanna check off my list, including our exterior doors. And for today's video, we're going to be giving my back door a little bit of a makeover. And I'm very excited to partner up with Cricut on this video to personalize some of these items that I'll be styling with. And the reason why I'm working on the back door first is just because I can easily do this project in one day. The front door has to be replaced completely, so I'm going to save that for another day. So I thought I'd show you guys a quick, easy, and budget-friendly way to update a door without spending a ton of money. And before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe down below for new videos every single week. And let me take you guys over to the back door. Okay, so this is what we're working with. We have our door, and then we also have this doorstep. It rained earlier today so it's still wet oh my god what kind of bug is that hello sir what are you i probably would have stepped on you if i didn't see you right now oh my god you guys can see there's a little bit of texture here so i'm going to try and fill that up and then i also want to make this area super cute make a doormat put some pumpkins on the side and make it ready for fall and we have to get rid of this this is a window cling and i overall really love these three windows but i think i want to put some frosted film just to have some privacy here without having to put up blinds and overall i really love the door it just needs a little bit of an up Date. Excuse me, sir. Okay, and also coming on the inside, this doorknob is super loose. There's also some really sharp edges in here that honestly will cut you if you aren't careful. So I want to replace this as well. And we also have our beautiful paper blinds here. So this is gonna go once we put in the new film. And yeah, this is super easy to come off. You just peel it off but for now I'll leave it. So that's what we're working with and my goal is just to make it look super cute. So let's go ahead and go to the hardware store and get all of our supplies. Hello from voiceover Tina. So we're off to get our supplies and I first needed to find paint suitable for exterior doors. So we just needed a small amount and I just grabbed a quart. Then I headed over to the knobs and there were so many to choose from. I really love that they were on display so you could actually touch them and turn them. And when I was browsing around, I was specifically looking for an antique brass finish knob and I thought that would go really great with the new paint color. Then we needed to find some frosted window film, but all the ones that they had in stock had a pattern on them. So I ended up just ordering one online instead. And you know you're in Chicago when there's a hot dog stand in the store, so of course we couldn't leave without one. So we're back with all of our supplies and the first thing we need to do is just prep the whole space. So I first need to clean everything up and then fill in all the holes and also loosen the hardware before we even get to painting. For these areas, I'm gonna use plastic wood. So this is just gonna smooth it all out, including these little areas. So we're gonna patch these all up and then I'm going to let this dry, sand it down, and then we can paint. This plastic wood that I'm using is essentially a wood filler. It goes on pink and when it dries, it turns to a natural wood color. And this is really great to use, especially for any holes or gaps in wood. I used a wide putty knife to scrape it across the door and I just tried to get it as leveled as possible. This was really easy to work with and I found it to dry pretty quickly as well. So if you've been looking for a solution like this, I would totally recommend this plastic wood. So here's how it's looking. You could already see that it's drying up quite a bit and I actually did not mean to cover up all this texture but then I saw it and I just couldn't not smooth it out. So I have some a little bit everywhere but so far this seems to be working great so I'm gonna let this dry and you'll see that once it turns the natural color that's how you know that's ready to be sanded and painted. So 
So this is looking great and it's time to paint. So this is the paint I got. It's for cabinets and doors and it's for interior and exterior. So I got the color Oh my god, I can't even hold this. I got the color carbon. It's not the darkest black, but it is basically black and that's what I'm going for. So when painting a door, you just want to start with any paneling and detail work first. And this is just going to make it a lot easier and also makes the application of the paint more even. So I'm starting with the bottom three panels first and then I'm going to make my way over to the small paint details around the glass. This black color is going to be a nice change and to give our exterior some contrast with a bit more of a modern look. You guys know that my house is built in the 50s and has a lot of quirks, one of them being that the doors don't all work correctly. So rather than getting rid of everything, I wanted to try my best to fix what I can. If you don't want to remove the hardware completely, you can just loosen the screws like I did here and this is going to allow you to paint around it without having to reinstall everything. And I wasn't sure if the paint was going to dry before I could put the new hardware in, so this is a great way to work around it. Also, I wanted to make the disclaimer now that I will be getting a storm door on the outside of this before the winter comes, so this door will be protected. And I also am not painting the sides of the door in this video just because I'll be painting the back of it later on. So while we wait for the first coat to dry, I did want to get a head start on my little DIY projects. These are going to be very simple, but allow us to customize our pieces. So the first thing I want to do is to make a doormat. So in this little area, there is a small step and you guys can see it's kind of narrow. So a regular doormat won't really fit on there. So I grabbed one of these Ikea ones and we're going to cut it down as well as create our own design on it. So I'm going to do that with my Cricut Joy, which you guys can see over there in the background. And let me show you guys how to do this project. So for design, I'm using the Cricut Design Space to create my own little leaf shape by using the Shapes tool. So here I have two circles in the same size and then I'm just going to overlap them until I get my desired shape. And from there, I'm going to hit the Slice button and this is going to break up all the little lines into individual shapes and then I'm going to go ahead and delete the other shapes and only keep the leaf. Then I'm duplicating the shape three more times and I'm going to move it around to create a small floral pattern. So depending on the size of your doormat, you want to adjust this accordingly. Then I'm basically just going to repeat this pattern along the entire length of the rug, which was about 29 inches. And this design was actually inspired by a doormat that I saw at Target. I already had the IKEA doormat at home, so I'm really glad that I was able to customize it to the exact size I needed for less. And if you don't want to create your own design, you can totally just look at the library of templates, projects, and images from Cricut. The Cricut Design Space has so many awesome projects and I love browsing through the library and just getting inspo. And if you guys want to check out my pattern in Design Space, I will have this link down below as well. All right, so I'm using my Cricut Joy just to cut this all out and I'm using the Smart Vinyl, so I'm able to make this as long as I need it to be and it does not require any mats, so that is super awesome. I just really love how small the Cricut Joy is. It just makes creating projects super easy, even for bigger projects like this one. Now it's time for my favorite part, so we're just going to weed this all out and since I'm creating a stencil with this, I'm going to be removing the leaf shape. And if you wanted to, you can also create a stencil with other materials like cardstock, but I'm using the vinyl because this is going to make it super easy to stick onto the doormat without bleeding through. In total, I created three of these stencils to cover the entire doormat, and I also already have it marked off to where I will be cutting it. So here I'm just moving it around and aligning it onto the mat just to make sure that everything is evenly spaced out. So I've marked off where I'm going to cut the mat and then I'm just placing these in here just to visualize it. And this is looking pretty good so I'm going to peel it all off, stick it on, and then we can get to spray painting. So once I was happy with that, I just pressed it down just to make sure that it was really stuck on there. And then with some tape, I'm going to cover up all the parts that we don't want spray paint on. <music>
took this outside and we're going to be using a black spray paint that is suitable for outdoor use. And as I'm spraying it, I'm also holding the can directly above it just so that it doesn't spray out at any angles and bleed into the other areas. I did about two coats of this and just let it sit to dry. To cut it to size, I just marked off where I wanted the initial cut and then I flipped it over and then I used the grid lines on the other side with a utility knife just to cut through the mat. And once you cut through it, all you have to do is to flip it over and just split it apart. The rug is looking really great and the next thing I want to do is just to custom- Oh, I just dropped it. <laughs> So I want to customize one of these craft pumpkins and my vision is just to fill up the whole thing with real pumpkins and then have this one fake one with the personalization on it. So let me show you guys my design. This is super simple and I love pairing a cursive font with a serif font. So the juxtaposition is really nice. So I'm using my Cricut on some black vinyl to attach it to the pumpkin. And one quick tip when you're using a cursive font like this is to make sure that you weld it all together just so that it cuts out together and it looks all nice. And yeah, this is super cute and let's cut it out. I'm so happy with it. It is so perfect and so easy to do. And if you guys are interested in the fonts that I use, I will have them listed down below. And the sun decided to come back out, so I'm going to finish the second layer of paint. And once that's all dry, I can go ahead and style and then show you guys the final reveal. I'm back in my painting shirt, and for this layer, I'm actually going to use a roller just to try to get more even coverage. And for the knob, I'm actually going to keep it on for now just because it's getting dark. So tomorrow, I will change that and style everything. So I'm going to start painting and give you guys an update when I'm all done. Using the roller definitely helped me smooth this out more and the second coat just gave so much more coverage and I think the door was looking really good at this point. I also wanted to take this time to ask you guys what you would like to see more of on this channel as I'm working on the house. I will be doing a kitchen makeover this month so I'm super excited about that but I also just wanted to hear your suggestions on what else you guys would like me to share on here. So many of you have given me such great feedback so I just want to say thank you so much for following along as I learned all these new things every week. We're getting so close to 150,000 subscribers, which is so crazy. And I definitely want to celebrate that and give back to you guys with a giveaway soon. So when that happens, make sure to keep your eyes peeled. And if you're not already, make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss out. So it's a new day and the first thing I'm going to do is to install the new doorknob as well as the deadlock. I've never done this before, so I did watch some tutorials on this, so hopefully it doesn't take too much time. This is the set that I picked out and it is an antique brass, so I thought, oops, so I thought this would look really nice against the black. It has a more classic, traditional look. I didn't really want to go with something too modern. This is going to be a nice change and one of many doorknobs that I'm probably going to have to change in this whole house. Okay, I don't know why I was so intimidated to change out the deadbolt and the doorknob, but the tutorial that I watched and the instructions that the kit came with actually made it so easy to switch out. I also just feel safer changing this out since we only had one key to the old one and the knob was always loose. So not only is this going to look better, but it's also just going to function a lot better. And you can really change the look of a door with just this simple switch. I think the brass one just ties in a lot better with my vision for the house. And all of our interior doorknobs are mismatched. So after I did this one, I really felt like I can just take on all the doorknobs around the house so much more easily. All right, guys, we are getting down to the finish line. So the last thing I need to do is just to put up this privacy film. This should be super easy to put on. All you need to do is to spray the window with some water and then use a squeegee to put this on and then cut it off to size. This is a really easy and affordable alternative to getting frosted glass. So let's put this on and then we can get to styling. So on the packaging for this, it said the more water you use, the better. So I'm spraying on a generous amount onto the glass. And I cut the film to be a little bit larger than the actual window. So this is going to allow us to just align the straight edge on the top and then I'm going to move it around. 
I was so surprised at how easily I was able to work with this. And once I got it into place, I just squeegeed it on with my little Cricut burnishing tool, but you can also use something like a credit card. And I found that the best method was just starting from the center and then working outwards to get rid of any air bubbles. And to cut off the excess, I just use a box cutter right along the edge and this is gonna give you the perfect fit. Wow, you guys, that was super easy to install. I think this looks perfect. Totally recommend it to you guys if you guys are looking for a really easy, also renter-friendly way to get some privacy. And now we have two more to go. Let's do this. Okay, here's what we're working with. I got all these pumpkins and I also got these mums for only $4.50 each, which is amazing. I love that they're yellow, but also have a touch of orange in them. And then also this pumpkin I'm obsessed with. They have these really beautiful dusty blue pumpkins and it's gonna look amazing. I think these flowers I'm gonna put on the sides here just to cover up these really sad looking plants. And yeah, that's the plan for now. Let's get to styling. Whether it's big or small, I love that I get to share these projects with you guys and turn this house into a home. This entry just needed a few quick fixes, a couple of DIYs and some cute decor to complete it. And since Halloween is coming up this month, I decided to hang my moon wreath up with a little command hook and this is just the perfect spot to display it. And with that, let's quickly take a look back at the before of this entry. Just super plain, super boring, and a little shoddy. So after our quick little makeover, let's take a look at the after. our back door is ready for the fall time. I'm so happy with how it turned out. And I love that we were able to add some personal touches and just do all these DIYs in one day. So if you guys have been thinking about painting your door, I would totally recommend it. And let me know what your thoughts are on this mini makeover in the comments down below. And again, a huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. If you guys wanna check out all the projects as well as some of the files that I have, be sure to check out all my links in the description box down below. If you're inspired by any of these projects, don't forget to post them over on Instagram and make sure that you guys tag me. I love seeing all of your projects and I'll share a few on the screen here. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.